Some of you already know that I actually do not like selling cover calls. I actually think they suck. Cover call strategies have been extremely popular recently, especially among retail traders and people who are looking to retire. I understand the appeal, right? You can generate enough income to replace your full-time income, but there are a lot of downsides that people don't talk about when it comes to cover calls. There's a lot of risks. And on this channel, we like to understand what the risks are so that we can make the right financial decisions. In this video, we're gonna talk about why I think cover call sucks and we're gonna use researched evidence to back that claim up. Let's first align on what a cover call actually is. We're gonna head over to my public portfolio that I post updates on a regular basis. Right here, we have 200 shares of TSMC. They're up 56.4% year to date. A cover call essentially is by selling a call option when you already own 100 shares of that stock. So let's just first demonstrate by going to the option chain and selling one call option above it. For demonstration purposes, let's just do 30 days. TSMC right now is trading at $287, give or take. So by selling a call above 287, let's say $310, if TSMC goes above $315 in 33 days, I will be forced to sell my TSMC at $310. If it goes at 325, 330, 340, it doesn't matter. The buyer of that option, he thinks that if TSMC goes above 315 to 340, 350, he can get a deal by buying it from me at 315. All he has to do is to pay me $580 for that guarantee of me selling him 100 shares of TSMC. You can already see some of the downsides or, or trade-offs associated with cover calls. If TSM were to go above $315.80, as you see on the screen, I will end up losing money, right? If it goes to 320, I will end up losing money because TSMC gained another 10 points, which is $1,000, right? 10 shares, 100 shares times 10, but I only collected 580. So the reason that people love selling covered calls is because the income that you can collect is pretty solid. So if you look at the yield and this number, this, this terminology will come up pretty often. You would take your total credit collected, which would be 580, divided by your sale price, which is would be $310 times 100 shares, and you will collect around 1.7% return times that by 12 months and you can get close to 20% return annualized. And I can see why this is so popular among people who are looking for additional income, people who are looking to retire, maybe in your 20s, 30s, 40s, or people who are already at retirement age in 60s and 70s, because you can collect enough money to potentially replace your full-time salary. And this is why there's a lot of now cover called funds like XYOD, JEPI, or even more recently, NVIDI, NVDY, Tesla, TSLY, Amazoni, all these high yield funds that generate massive, massive payouts on a monthly basis and sometimes even weekly basis. But when something sounds that good, there tends to be risks and drawbacks. So let's really talk about why I think cover calls sucks. And you may be making a mistake if you're looking to one, replace your full-time income to retire, and two, already retired and looking to supplement your retirement income. So let's deep dive into the downsides of cover calls. And we're going to use this paper called A Devil's Bargain to really understand the risks and downsides associated with selling covered calls. The first takeaway from this paper is that yield is not free. Higher income, whether it's weekly or monthly, means that you are usually trading that increased income with the likely upside that your stock might have. So for example, let's take a look at TSM. Again, TSM is at 287. If I were to sell it at 290, I would collect $470 or so. But if I were to sell it at 300, right, I would collect 175. And if I were to sell it at 310, I would be at $53. So the more premium we collect, the closer we are going to be to the money. It's much more likely for TSMC to go to 290 from 287 than it is for it to go from 287 to 310 dollars i think intuitively we all know that but the reason that this is really harmful on the call side is because the market tends to go up over time 
This is true for the S&P 500, regardless of what time frame you look at, and it's true for stocks like TSMC, NVIDIA, or any other stock over a long period of time. Which means a couple things. One is that you are probably more likely to get assigned because of the fact that the market tends to underestimate the amount of risk you're taking on the call side. And this is because the market tends to always drift up. We talked about this on other videos. And number two, especially if you are an individual retail investor and you are selling cover calls individually, not buying a fund, you might feel the urge to buy that option back at a loss. And so by selling calls, what you can see is that this yield is not free, whether it's directly associated with getting assigned or two, with you buying back that option at a loss, which leads us to takeaway number two. Most of the returns that we get over a long period of time actually comes from the stock appreciation, not from the premiums. We will see from this chart that there is a direct correlation between the amount of money that we collect and the money that we're losing from the upside from the stock. So intuitively, this makes sense, right? The lower the yield, it means you're further away from the money, more unlikely for the stock to surpass it. When we're up to 25%, some, which is means we're really close to the money, it's a high likelihood that the stock price goes above our strike, hence why we see negative returns as we get more aggressive closer to the money. The market drifts upwards, and so it is more likely than not that if we're very close to the money, we'll end up losing on that potential upside from the stock. You might be saying, well, if I collect enough premium, then it shouldn't matter, right? What you're, what you're going to see is that even the most aggressive cases where we're really close to the money, we are collecting a lot of money, but that is not enough to cover the amount of money that we're losing when the stock rises. And there is a scenario where you can make a little bit of money right here at the top of this chart. And we'll talk about that later on this video. So make sure you guys stay for that. And I really want to hone this takeaway in by showing you a real life example of why this is such a, what they call a devil's bargain. And if you look at my portfolio, you'll see that we were assigned on March 18th and March 20th from our puts, and we were forced to buy 200 shares of TSMC. On average, we were collecting around $182 a share. TSM right now is at $287. So that's around six months ago. It's been an uptrend ever since, right? It is very unlikely that I can replicate this 60% return from collecting premiums, right? If I were to sell it every single month, that'd be six times. I would have to collect 10% every single month. If I were to sell it weekly, I would have to make around 3% every single week, which means that I would basically be selling it right at the money, which will be close to like a 2% return. The argument that people tend to make is that if I get assigned, I'll sell puts or I'll just buy that stock back. If I were assigned on my call because I'm selling it right at the money that we just basically determined, let's assume that here on May 2nd, the stock was at 195, okay? One week later, on March, June 9th, is at 207. And let's assume I sold it at 195. The stock appreciated close to $12 a share, which means that on June 9th, I would have to buy it back at 207. And then if I sell it right at the money again, the, the following week, it would be at June 16th, for example, it would be at 215.68. I would again get assigned and I'd be losing again, like two or $3 every single share because again, my premium cannot eat the appreciation of the stock because I'm selling so close to the money. So that is usually what happens because you are trading yield for upside. Now let's take a step back and talk about a slightly different topic. Some people view cover calls and I get comments on this on my channel as a way to hedge because theoretically, if I sell a cover call, right? And the stock goes down, then I'm actually making some money and protecting myself from the stock dropping, right? I collect 200 bucks, but the stock drops 500 bucks and I'm making back Technically, I've only lost 300 bucks. But takeaway number three is actually that cover calls suck as a way to hedge. It's because the amount of money you collect is capped. When stocks or markets drop, they drop very, very, very fast, right? Think of the tariff pullback that we had earlier this year. It tends to not be able to absorb much of the fall. So I'll give you a real life example. My wife, she sold an option on Robinhood and collected $560 at a strike price of 155. Robinhood at the time was close to 148. It fell to close to 121. So from peak to trough, it was down close to 
18% from the moment she sold her option. Sure, she collected around 520 bucks, which is close to what, maybe 3% return, but the stock fell by 18%. She, only, she still lost 15 additional percentage points from the stock dropping. Another example is actually from a popular YouTube video. I refer to this video a lot. A guy was selling covered calls on Riot when Riot was back at like $60. Riot fell all the way down to $3.80. It fell by like 95%, maybe 97%. That cover call income is never going to be able to cover that much of a fall. And this is why, again, cover calls should not be used as a hedge. There are much better ways to hedge. Even if you sold a call credit spread, I'll link a tutorial in the upper right-hand corner here. It's a masterclass. Check that out. But the best way to hedge really is to just buy an out-of-the-money put option. Which leads me to the last takeaway. Income first strategies underperform in every way. Because we are trading income for growth, the amount of money that we could make from the stock just naturally appreciating is a lot more than the income that we can collect from selling that call. This chart here just basically tells you that the higher your yield, the less your expected return is. And I know this might be a little hard to understand, so let's take a couple of examples. There are a lot of cover call funds that sell calls on the underlying stock or fund. So for example, a famous one, JEPI is trying to sell cover calls on stocks like Nvidia, AbbVie, Microsoft, Alphabet, and they will give you a payout every single month. Payouts are pretty good. Right, you at its peak, you're collecting 61 cents per share, 35 points, 35 per share, right? And the annualized yield is 8.36%. Another really popular one is XYOD, same idea. It owns the five S&P 500 and it gives you a 12.82% return. And you're looking at this and you go, this is pretty good. Now this is where it gets a little bit more fun. And we're gonna compare JAPI to XYOD and we'll compare that to the S&P 500. Use VU as a proxy. And all we care about is total return. If I were to do absolutely nothing and just accept the premiums, the dividends, and let the stock appreciate, will I outperform the S&P 500? You can see over a six months period, S&P 500 is up 20%, and including dividends, XYLD is at 9% and JEPI is at 6%. If you go to year to date, the gap is even larger one year, it's even a little bit larger. Five years, it's even larger, almost double, right? 106% to 59 and 51. Now, the reason for that is actually really simple, right? We talked about how the equity from the stock appreciating is getting cut off. So if you look at the actual stock price, over a five-year time frame, right? S&P 500 has appreciated 92%. JEPI is up 3.66% while well, XYLD is down 12.4%. JEPI and XYLD has to return that difference in terms of dividends right, and payouts. But it's really hard to return more and more money, especially in XYLD's case, 10% of $45 is $4.50. 10% of $39 or $40 is $4, which means that every in five years, you've actually lost 50 cents in dividends, even though the dividend yield remains the same, right? You're getting the same amount but of a smaller pie. Now, this is even worse when, it com when you talk about more aggressive cover call strategies, right? Such as Tesla versus the underlying, which is Tesla. All we care again about is total returns. So in a year, Tesla's up 49%, while Tesla is up 40%. In five years, which is a little bit unfair because it's only been around for three years, you can see that the gap is at 199 while it's at 56, probably closer to like 57, because you can see there's like a 2% gap, 10% gap right here. Same thing with NVIDIA and NVIDIA. One year, right? NVIDIA is still outperforming NVIDIA. And in five years, if you were to start right here again, right, it is at 1,200% while NVIDIA is at 283% and subtract around 100% there. The more aggressive you are selling calls, yield max ETF cases, you're selling it weekly, you will end up losing more money as opposed to just buying the underlying. And this is especially true if you're in 20, 30, 40s, and 50, right? You're trying to replace your full-time income with some of these dividend ETFs or high, high income ETFs. We're not at an age where we should be concerned about income. We should be concerned about total returns because that is what is going to allow us to compound. And there are a couple issues that arise when you're relying on these 
cover call funds or income funds for retirement or replacing your full-time income. One is if we need capital, look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA is at 20 bucks, now it's at $15.33, which means that in a span of a year and a half, two years, it's down 23%. So if you needed that cash immediately, you have to lose 23%. And the worst part is if you're relying on a steady flow of income, these payouts will actually start decreasing over time. It started off at $19 and is now down to $8.56. Why is that? Remember, again, Tesla started at $40. Now it's at $8. Because why? It keeps getting assigned. Their asset under management is dropping continuously as they try to maintain that yield. The dividend yield is still the same year after year, but you can see the dividend growth is slowing. And especially in Tesla's case, it is now negative. You may be get, getting $100 in year one. You'll only be getting $53 in year two. And this doesn't even include inflation. And this is exactly why if you're in your 20s to 50s looking to retire is not a sustainable way because your income will decrease. Let's talk a little bit about how to actually trade cover calls. Now, if you guys want a master class on cover calls, let me know down in the comments section below. And when I do make it, I'll link it here in the upper right hand corner. First thing from research from this paper it indicates that if you wanted to trade cover calls, you have to trade it very, very conservatively, like really far out of the money because that's the only time where you are expected to make positive returns. By generating 1.2% to 2.4% of annualized yield from covered calls, this provides enough money to outperform the S&P 500 by 0.2%. Not a lot, but it's overperformance nonetheless. If it's 2.4% annualized yield, you're getting around like 0.1 or 0.2% every single month. So you're selling really far out the money. The second way, which is my preferred way of selling covered calls is as a way to exit a position. So take that TSM shares that I own. If I want to sell a hundred shares of TSM, I would then sell a covered call, hoping that they would get assigned. At the same time, I will collect income, right? From selling that covered call, which then raises my cost basis. So that about wraps up this video. There are a lot of cons to covered calls, but there is a time and place to trade it. And this is why, you want to subscribe to this channel because I want to make sure that you guys are understanding the amount of risk you guys are taking on and adjusting your portfolio or your strategy accordingly. Now, let me know down in the comment section below if you guys agree or disagree with me or some of your covered calls stories where it turned out well or it didn't turn out well. If you guys want to learn how I generate passive income as well as grow my portfolio through options, make sure you guys check out this video linked in the end screen right here. And if you want to check out my public portfolio that I showed in this video, I'll link the playlist right here as well. Like always, stay safe in the market. Until next time, peace.